this is Tom, a.k.a. Gerio here for Star for Tears Gamer and Tabletop Tap Room. This is our first fanzine Friday being hosted under the strictly under the Tabletop Tap Room umbrella. Don't forget, at the end of this video, I'm going to cover details about a giveaway. We are giving away some Star Frontier swag. And, um, you, you know, if you love Star Frontiers and you don't mind a little bit of swag, stay tuned for the details at the end of the video. So this is Fanzine Friday number 22, which means we are covering Star Frontiersman magazine number 22. Now, I love this cover. <laughs> What you get in this cover is now it's the, the artwork's not the the greatest here. I mean, when you you look at some of the shading, uh, you know, down here on the snow and around the the shadow of the guy, yeah, you, you, you can criticize it. But this is a uh, mission to Alcazar explorer vehicle, and uh, we we get it here set in a snow setting, which is just cool to me. I love this um this is not what we've seen before but it is a classic uh explorer vehicle of the uh, mission to alcazar style i love the heavy weapon and the roof hatch just cool stuff um so the artwork is by uh, j.a davis he's done some artwork throughout and um the editor is william douglas this is a redacted issue uh, that had a digitally remastered uh, Dragon Magazine article in it, I believe, just the Frontiers of Design. Uh, I'm not seeing anything else here, uh, but it looks like it's just that. Was included in the, uh, in the issue. And, of course, after Evil Hat trademark squatting um, happened, all of the digitally remastered um, stuff that was available for free had to be taken down. All IP had to be taken down. Uh, and that was easy enough to just take down the digitally remastered rules and modules that were available. But then uh, Tom Stevens had to go and uh, pull all of these issues down and excise the pages with the Dragon Magazine article out of them. So you will find a jump in the page numbers uh, like right around page 45. <laughs> in this PDF, unless you have a PDF that you downloaded before 2018, in which case you have a rare item in that uh, you've got the unredacted with the uh, Dragon Magazine article that has been, you know, redone, rearranged, put back in print. So first uh, up in this issue is Adventure by Ben Gorman, Incident on the Cinca Maru. And the Cinco Maru is a mining ship. You see it uh, portrayed here, um, grappled to a asteroid. And uh, it's something has happened on the Cinco Maru. The player characters have to go in and investigate. Basically, it's Walking Dead meets Star Frontiers, which I'm okay with. Because you're facing these um, zombie-like revenants. And uh, the, the, there's an alien intelligence there, and uh, but it, it plays like, you know, zombies in space, which is okay. I actually, I actually do. I don't mind that at all. I uh, love this particular piece of artwork in uh, in this in this adventure, and it's uh, Into the Airlock by J. A. Davis. I mean, look at the Drawlicite's face all squished up inside that space helmet. I love that. Uh, that is a cool piece of artwork. So <clears throat> this, uh, here's uh, a Revenant by J.A. Davis. And we're going to see another one here. Boom. This is the cool looking one in my book. Uh, I love this. There is one more before the end. So these Revenants, um, you know, they, they kind of play like zombies. And... Oh, we come on down. You get at the end of this adventure here, they do an Ada section, maps and things, top down view of the Cinco Maru, and then Cinco Maru rear view, showing the work pods, uh, trailing ejection ports. That is for the orbital, uh, the orbital uh, ore hopper, the orbital processing lab that's attached to the ship. And 
there is a, I should re reduce this so you can see it all on the screen. This is a side view showing it using the Nighthawks weapon system called grapples to grapple a asteroid. And um, now I came up with this idea independent of Ben Gorman, but I have, I have always thought that the grapple system was ideal for miners to grapple an asteroid, hold it in place. But I, I tend to think you need some sort of buffering system, you know, on there, but between the ship and the asteroid that buffers, buffers it from the rock ever impacting or grinding against the hull. Um, <clears throat> that's my two cents. This must be at least a hull size 14 ship for it to have one digger shuttle and a processing lab. And uh, that's per Nighthawks. And they show you a, you know, you get a cross section here of the ship. And showing you the decks all the way down. Now, not my favorite deck plan, but that's okay. Um, this looks like it was done in something like Dungeony. And man, there's an awful lot of bunks and beds in in this uh, common area. Uh, it just seems like it's overloaded with crew, more crew than it needs, my opinion. And then we get uh, the ventral gun decks. And then the rest of these decks are squared off because they're in square shaped sections of the ship. So you get a whole mining ship detailed here. It's kind of handy. Next up is uh, spaceships. And uh, you get a write up here. This is by Stephen Par uh, Parento, if I'm pronouncing it right, man. I, I, it's a good French name like that, and I'm, I'm probably murdering it. Uh, you got the Gold Star Cruise Lines is are described, and you know they they detail a bunch of different ships, you know by class, the ship's name. So you've got these names of these cruise ships, and basically they're going to provide you with a write up on a Constellation class cruise ship, and a little bit of artwork here. Here is the cross section. And you've also got the stats here, hull size eight. Not a huge ship, bigger than a destroyer, a little bit smaller than a light cruiser as, as far as uh, naval ships go. And, um, you know, so it's, it's well detailed, well drawn out. I love Steve's deck plans. Does great work. Just absolutely love the presentation of these deck plans and the software he uses to do them. Like uh, here. Let's say you're not even using a cruise ship. You could use this deck plan as a casino. It just happens to be a round casino. Uh, and it could have a second floor, and that would be the restaurant, or the restaurant's the first floor, and, you know, the casino's the second floor. So uh, definitely a fan of Steve's work. You, you know, and eventually, eventually you're going to want to place an adventure on a Starliner. I have placed two on Starliners now and, and run those. And, you know, because the journey bookends the, you know, here's the beginning and here's the end, um, you know, and most of the time it's a murder mystery. So you got to solve the murder mystery before you arrive at port or, you know, the murderer gets away. So, uh, you know, Starliners are handy for that. They're slow boats. They, the maximum ADF is one, so they're they're a slow ship, and that gives you a little bit of time to play around with um, solving the murder mystery on the Starliner. Next up is Expanded Nighthawks ships designed by Andy Campbell. Andy's very thorough, and basically here he's arguing that the minimum hull size in Nighthawks is not about hull size. It's about engine power, how much engine power um, is available, how much power is available for the ship to operate these systems. He makes the case. I agree with him. I think he, it's well-sounded, well-thought-out. Um, he Practical engine design limits. He then goes into, you have a table here of equipment that never received a minimum, minimum hull size because he's proposing a much more granular system for how much stuff can you put on the ship? Uh, how much power does it have available to operate these systems? And so you have this whole list here 
of uh, equipment that never had a minimum hull size, but he's assigned it a minimum hull size in keeping to try to keep the whole system balanced. And then we get into a little bit of math for figuring things out here. That's, you know, math's not that hard. And building ships. Then you get this efficiency ratings on existing ship designs. And uh, so what he's done is he has looked at the observed equipment on all of these ships that were detailed for us in Nighthawks or the yachts and the privateers from the uh, yachts and privateers return dragon magazine article. And, you know, this looks like an attempt to proof his system against observed design that we see for the game. He includes the pirate Corvette from uh, Nighthawks zero. He uh, module, he includes the Sathar scout ship from um, night uh, from the Nighthawks uh, three module beyond the frontier. Then we get down here to the Zuricor uh, strike back, and he looks at the Zuricor ships against their observed uh, material. And uh, so thorough, I've not play tested it because uh, I haven't done a lot of Nighthawks gaming in my Star Frontiers gaming. It's just tended to be another direction. So it's not something I did, but this is much more granular. This is a probably a much more thorough starship building system. So uh, I, from the looks of it, I kind of got to say recommend. Now, next up, we have Solar Sails, uh, Andy Campbell. And uh, this, I believe this material was published in the Lost Internet. And we're going to talk about the Lost Star Frontiers Internet. Uh, in a minute, but I believe it was dug up out of there and republished here. And um, solar sails. Your ADF is determined by how far you are from the sun and how much pressure your ship is receiving on its solar sails from the solar wind. So when your ship is in close to uh, 0.4 AU, the, mer uh, the orbit of Mercury, you've got 7 ADF. When you're at 0.5 AU, which would be the equivalent of the Snowball, the Memni homeworld, you're at 4 ADF, so it dropped off pretty fast there. When you're at the orbit of uh, Venus, which is 0.7 to 0.8, which is Venus, Inner Reach, Clarion, Liberty Systems, Asteroid Belt, you would be at an ADF of 2. Um, 1 AU which would be Earth and Outer Reach of Dramian System, ADF of 1. And then it starts dropping off. You, you know, your, um, your, your ADF is really cut down to, um, you know, it's, you start doing it in one every three turns, one every five turns, one every 25 turns, one every 100 turns. So suddenly your, your ADF is you will move one hex in five turns. That's going to slow things down. So there's this thought that solar sails cannot be used for void jumping. Now, I beg to differ <laughs> because you only need to get up to a speed of uh, 180 hexes per turn. And you can do that providing you don't start at 1 AU. You need to fly towards the sun, get into some of these higher ADFs, and uh, then you can turn around and fly out and never get bogged down with this, uh, you know, one every three turns movement, one every five turns movement, one every 25 turns movement, which, you know, if you've not hit jump speed and you're out there at around 5 AU, the orbit of Jupiter or 10 AU, the orbit of Saturn, uh, you're going to run out of food <laughs> before you ever hit jump speed. <laughs> it's, you have slowed to a crawl. Uh, your acceleration is slowed to a crawl, and you're just not going to hit jump speed. But if you go into, um, say, you know, 0.5 AU, uh, the orbit of Snowball in the Memni system, uh, homeworld, you can turn around and go streaking back out a system at, you know, ludicrous speed and get to void jump speed. It's not an issue. You will get there with a solar sail. And since void jump speed is just a function of 1% of light speed, it's very doable. So uh, there's some information here on size and cost of sails. 
Uh, there's a table for cost of sales versus, const you know, Starship Construction Center. Um, you know, just a, a thorough covering of the material for Nighthawks. The perception is you can't get the jump speed. And I beg to differ because I've done the math. You just fly in closer to the sun, turn around and book it out. It's, it, it's actually faster to fly deeper into the system towards the sun and then turn around and use that high speed, you know, and boogie on out. You'll hit void jump speed. Now, the only other consideration I would consider with that is that you need to turn the solar sails into a solar collector to draw off some power for powering the ship or you need a nuclear reactor on the ship. And uh, what I do for nuclear reactors is simply I grab the uh, class A atomic drive. It's no longer atomic drive. It's hand ruled. It's a reactor. So it's a reactor. It's all the shielding. It's in the engineering deck and the power from it is used and because you're not using it for all that thrust, um, you know, one fuel pellet will last a long time. So, you know, you can hand wave that one fuel pellet will, you know, last the ship, you know, six months, whatever. Uh, because you're just powering the lights and the life support and a few other systems and, and maybe a weapon system. How often does the ship get into combat? You want to avoid that because those solar sails are kind of, fragile and they stand out from the body of the ship and um, you know so you would want to avoid combat if at all cost so next up is space stations subtitled islands in the sky kudos to andy campbell for such a great title because that's a, the name of an arthur c clark book islands in the sky about space stations so um you know here they he goes into uh, it's an examination of and an expansion of the material in Nighthawks concerning space stations. This is what this is. Um, you know, so where are they? Station orbits. What's up there? Uh, space station construction. Who's in charge of the space station slash ownership? Earning a living. And then uh, we get into an expansion of the material. Like, for instance, Nighthawks rule book never told us how many launches a space station could have here he's detailed 1d10 uh, per point of station size so you know space station is hulls they got sizes one through six so it's 1d10 times whatever the station size is same for work pods 1d10 uh work pods per point of station size this is a great rule of thumb um you know it's a rule of thumb rule here that uh you know, just let your hand wave, you know, it's, it may not have the full complement of uh, launches or work pods that it could have. So this rule lets you just simulate a rough number. This is what this station has. And then we get some uh, tables on station dimension and projected areas and populations. So this is a very thorough article and it expands on the data in Star Frontiers, but he also references data from a NASA study on space stations, so very thorough on his part. Next up is Frontier Fiction by Eric Johnson, and this is a sequel to Bug Hunt, which was in Star Frontiersman number 17. Great story. If you've not read Bug Hunt, you need to read Bug Hunt, um, and uh, it's one of the crossover pieces of fiction in Star Frontiers that uh, kind of riffs off Call of Cthulhu a little bit, and I love it for that reason. So this story picks our, up our, our worst for wear heroes from that story and follows them through a survival situation. They're trying to get off this, this planet, this unexplored planet, and uh, they have some adventures here. And uh, so you can read that for yourself with no spoiler alert from me. So I just want to point out, this is a great piece of artwork from uh, A.J. Davis. It's got a Yazarian jumping off a building, obviously intending to glide on his Pataguam, uh wing flaps. 
You've got some security personnel blasting away at him with automatic weapons. And you also see up here in the sky, there is a uh, an air car with some sort of official looking shield on there. It must be the police, the popo. And they're bearing down on this Yazarian. So, uh, but the Yazarian's got like a smile, kind of a smile on their face, like, <laughs> like he doesn't care or he expects to get away. Next up, we have character races. Now, <laughs> these are the Belfians. They're from Belfar. They are anthropomorphic rabbits. Um, if, if you've been watching this channel, you know how I feel about that. I actually like this article because this is well well done and, and thorough. Not only do you get the uh, full write-up on the race, you get this system information, like that it's 94.3 light years from Prangular. Well, that puts it off the map. Uh, but you get a system brief, you get a planetary brief, um, and just and then civilization information. Like, look at this here: level law level level one. Concealed weapons, poison gas, and explosives are prohibited. I would not tell the player characters that up front. I'd let them learn the hard way. <laughs> so. Oh, and they've even put in here manufactured resources. We got tea, caustic alkali, vehicles, and robots. So it could become a destination for your freighter. If you miss jump, you might as well pick up some raw materials uh, for your jump back to the frontier so that you don't waste the whole trip. Also, on the Belfians, uh, the uh, is it Hero Forge? Hero Forge, doing the minis, you can do the minis. You can do them with fantasy and sci-fi equipment. They have an anthropomorphic rabbit species. So you could do a sci-fi rabbit miniature and get it done and get it printed. Um, uh, I don't know that I'd pay the Hero Forge prices, but I would pay for the, for the file that you could then take to a friend with a 3D printer or if you have a 3D printer and you can get a number of miniatures uh, printed. So and, and I think that would be much more cost effective doing it that way because a friend's probably going to be like, yeah, sure, whatever, uh, and not even charge you for the, uh, the plastic or the resin. So, uh, you know, the while I dish on the anthropomorphic animals, Hero Forge is making it real easy that if you do use them, you can actually get miniatures to run in your game that are going to match sci-fi aesthetic. And you can do that through Hero Forge. Background information recovered from the internet at. Now, uh, this is an article by Mark White, and it's Food on the Frontier, and it just goes into cuisine for the core four species. So it's a simple little article, and it's, you know, it's cool. Uh, but what's more interesting is this link. So if you click the link, it takes you to the Wayback Machine, and it gets you into the lost Star Frontiers content from, you know, like 2000. Uh, which is a ways back, a uh, couple of decades now. Now, uh, it brings you to this page, UPF Star Command. Um, I think this is actually uh, Mike Wolf's page. But you want to come here. Here's, here's what you want to come here for. You want to come here and then click on, click on SF Links right down here. So you click on SF Links. It will bring you to the pay, a portion of this website where he chronicles bunch of websites you could check out. Now, you could just stay here and go check out these things for their lost content, like Palmyrin, uh, Palalirin cluster is very cool. Gavin Coe's site, he's actually putting that back up on the web. Uh, but you want to look for Star Frontiers. Where are you? Star Frontiers Now and Forever. Star Frontiers Now and Forever is Lane K. Saltern's page. And we're about to hear Lane in a second here. Greetings, space adventurer. This is Lane Saltern, your host. Welcome to Star Frontiers Now and Forever. <laughs> you get that little recording every time you land on his landing page. <laughs> How many times have I heard Lane K. Saltern say, greetings? <laughs> I have lost count. <clears throat> but you want to get to his page. Now, his page is, is a great clearinghouse for... Um, you know, helping you find stuff. You've got a link here for adventurers, a link for modules, games in progress. This would be play by posts that existed back in 1999, 2000, 
uh, other sites, and a Star Frontiers novel, if you're interested in reading a Star Frontiers novel. I did. Um, but you want to scroll down. Then you come down here to additional information. Additional information is the mother load. And it's the mother load because he is, is the most thorough catalog of Star Frontiers um, websites from that time. So that's why you want to find uh, Lane Saltern's page, uh, Star Frontiers Now and Forever. And uh, so then you can get into this because you can mine this for material. This is, you know, you're just, um, you know, bored someday. You want to be interested in seeing some Star Frontiers material. I would get in here and go go crawling through the dusty bowels of the lost Internet and you will find some content in here. Now, let's watch what happens here. Where was it? Mike Wolf, where are you? Because I know what. I... Yeah, Mike Wolf. So I click this link. And it comes up, the link is somehow broken. Well, you've got all these other screenshots, and it's broken here, but let's go back in time to this screenshot. Give it a second. And look where we are. And we're back to the UPF Strategic Command Center, which is where we started. So um, if, if one of the links is busted, like, Maybe information is correct or whatever. Go to a different screenshot uh, in the uh, Wayback Machine, and uh, you can probably see it there as well. But let's back up to Lane. We'll have to listen to him talk in a second here. Well, guess not. Um, so there's a lot of good uh, – where are you? Starbase Hellhound. That's a good one. Starbase Hellhound. Uh, there is a lot of material here. Just absolute lot of material for you to mine. And I do believe that um, Guy Behind Starbase Hellhound, I think it's Jason Parent, I think. Um, he is actually working to put all of his old content back up. You know, this this site is gone. This GeoCity site is gone. But he's, he's working to put it back up. And he's got a lot of material here. There's plenty here for you to, to uh, dig through. And I like, in particular his Jakar alien species. <laughs> you're, you're, about to, you're about to laugh at me. So just a word of warning, these pages can load a little bit slow, but this is the Jakar. And I know some of you are laughing at me going, Tom, that looks like an anthropomorphic bull. <laughs> it sure is. It's, uh, it's a minotaur. It's uh, an anthropomorphic bull. The write-up here is really kind of cool, kind of good. Um, I like the write-up. Um, these guys appeal to me. And um, down here, you know, he's he's worked on. I just like them. I don't know. My hypocrisy knows no bounds. Sorry. Uh, so these I actually kind of like. And uh, even like the artwork a little bit. They could use more. And Hero Forge will let you do a Minotaur with sci-fi equipment. So... Um, there's some possibilities there to include them as a, um, to include them as a uh, species in your Star Frontiers game. But, uh, this is from Starbase Hellhound. And, um, so just so much, you know, neurotoxins here. He's created poisons and neurotoxins that, you know, and he's got, um, you know, and toxicology by race. So it's not one size poison fits all. Kind of like that. Like the Huma, totally immune to this neurotoxin. But uh, a lot of other people are affected. And in particular, humans are affected um, with a strength of five. Whereas, uh, you know, Huma, strength of zero. Drolocyte, strength of one. But it lasts longer. 30 turns, uh, Yazarian strength of three, but it lasts longer than humans for 12 turns. So interesting stuff that he has done here. Uh, and that's what you get into. If you follow that link, there is just website. Greetings space adventurer. This is Lane Saltern, your host. Welcome to star frontiers now and forever. Okay. Just lots of stuff here. So here's the food article, and then they did this one on uh, religions. 
uh, skills and home worlds. Uh, it's actually just, I think it's just three, um, three religions. So they promise skills and home worlds, but um, it's just about three or four religions detailed in here. And he states up front that uh, this old blog post was found lying around and we thought it might inspire some new directions for your game. And then the classifieds. And um, I just, and again, I love the classifieds. I particularly love this Hence Collective. It says, the Hence Collective offers the largest collection of traditional Usarian heirloom and new stock seeds outside of the family of one. If you're tired of dealing with those religious fanatics, give us a call. Well, I predict that the Hence Collective <laughs> does not operate on the planet Hence. Um, uh, in the was it uh, in the hence system? The uh, it's Arax and hence. So um, if you're calling the rulers of the system and the planet religious fanatics, um, and as as uh, oppressive as they are, you're not operating there. So this business is being operated elsewhere, maybe in in uh, Prangular, Port Lauren. Um, you know, maybe on uh, Yast, uh, Athor, um, you know, even Clarion Station. So it could actually be a small chain um, that uh, they've they've got people making stuff in the traditional fashion, and they, you know, the small chain of uh, traditional Yazarian stuff. So this is uh, this is actually something I feel like really the storefront needs to be designed. Um, as a storefront that you would find on maybe a space station and or just in a strip mall in Port Lorne. And uh, this should be detailed up and a collection of traditional Yazarian uh, heirloom type objects. There are uh, musical instruments were created for the uh, Yazarian Bard article. Uh, there's traditional weapons were created for that as well. It, you know, there's the uh, the Kadan sword, the Zamra throwing, throwing uh, disc. So I definitely think that there's uh, there's scope to create this, uh, even some Yazarian food items, some dried targ jerky, whatever. Uh, I definitely feel like this really ought to be created, um, you know. And you know, this would be where if your Yazarians using disc grenades, maybe they go there to get their disc grenade bandolier, uh, you know. So definitely, uh, I think this classified should inspire some new content. I'll probably work on that um, or collaborate with someone to work on that. Um, like I, I could use a storefront map if somebody wants to do that. And uh, we definitely pull up all the little scraps of Yazarian lore from all over the magazines and condense all that into a shopping list for that store. And, uh, and a neat NPC it should have a neat NPC um, store proprietor. So, this is uh, Star Frontiersman number 22. Now let's talk about the giveaway that we're doing. This, of course, is the first Fanzine Friday uh, cast that's going under the tabletop tap room. I realized that there would be, be potentially an inconvenience to the subscribers of the Star Frontiers Gamer, but I really do want to unify all the gaming content under one umbrella and just be done with it and only have the one channel to maintain. Uh, I feel like it's going to simplify my life a little tiny bit and help me out. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and then we have some long-term plans to, uh, after we take down the Star Frontiers Gamer, change its name, and uh, we have ideas for a, a, another business um, pursuing monetization with another channel, non-gaming related. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, but that's a long-term project. So, in light of the fact that I am probably inconveniencing some people, I want to sweeten the deal, and we're doing swag giveaway. Now, this was the uh, uh, I did get this before the drama with Republic Tees. This was the canceled design, done as a coffee cup, never been used. This is the number one prize. Um, the logo says uh, 40 light years from the frontier, it's still exploring. That is an homage to Star Frontiers being 40 years old. You've got basic Star Explorers on there. It's a guy and a girl. The, the new design is a guy and a girl and a little alien pet. No IP is used in that. 
Um, and then I have two T-shirts with that design, both extra large. And um, around here somewhere, we're going to halt the video for that. But they're both extra large. And I only clicked on extra large when I was just getting some test products to check out Republic Tees because I wear extra large. So uh, I, I said I'd put those up as, you know, drawing number two, drawing number three. However, it occurred to me that some people are not don't wear an extra large. Some people wear small. Some people wear 2X or 3X or just a large. So if you don't want the T-shirt as a... Um, you can opt, and I'm going to throw up this consolation prize. You can opt for my uh, OSR Gaming uh, Values sh Only Show Respect uh, coffee mug. I got this out of Republic Tees before they, they shut me down. Uh, and uh, it's actually in the kitchen of the dishwasher right now. Uh, it, the other cup that you could opt for is the um, Star Frontier's New Genesis Urban Dictionary Cup. It says Star Frontier's New Genesis on one side, and on the other, it has the Urban Dictionary entry. So it, it, it's a little poke in the eye at Star Frontier's New Genesis. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I ordered that cup. I have used that cup for coffee, uh, so I will uh, wash it and uh, make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, so that will be the other thing you can opt for instead of the T-shirt, because um, I get it. You know, you might be sitting there, hey, I won, but I don't wear an extra large. You know, so uh, that's these are the drawing prizes. First place is this, but you can opt for something else. Second place is a t shirt, but you can opt for one of the coffee cups, one of the extra coffee cups I'm, I'm putting up. Uh, and you know, we, we just handle first place, let them opt for something different if they want, or they could just go with the nice 40th anniversary coffee cup because it's just cool. Um, it is, you know, this is unfortunately the canceled design, the rejected design. Um, and uh, we'll also have a link to the new um, Cafe Press store. Cafe Press so far has been very nice and they haven't, uh, you know, decided to just deplatform me randomly. No reason why, just you're out of here. And uh, so we like Cafe Press now and I will put a link in the show notes. So if you don't win, one of the giveaways, you can still pick up some Star Frontier swag. The, uh, you know, and the profits go towards uh, paying for more giveaways in the future, as well as new equipment. I'm touching my Yeti mic. Uh, uh, there's some new green screen technology I want to invest in. Uh, you know, what, what we're using right now is a Japanese screen covered with a piece of green cloth. And I'd like a little something different, a little bit easier to use in this room. Since this is, you know, uh, the, you know, get rid of the piece of furniture that I, I knock over and it hits the the frame picture on the wall all the time. So uh, that's what the uh, the 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 uh, minute amount of profit from the cafe press store will go towards is just towards giveaways, reinvesting, defraying the cost of things. Um, I think eventually we might pay for a a uh, some web hosting for a. Uh, a website uh, similar to the one that the Frontier Explorer had, but we're right now we're we're just as we're getting the a magazine up and running, we're doing it on a shoestring budget, and we're just kind of. But we are going to be looking for some support, and um, and one of the ways you could do that right now is buy a piece of swag. You know, we've done we've done the OSR values um, material, um, and we've done the 40th anniversary homage to Star Frontiers. So uh, that's the prizes. How do you get them? All you got to do is say, I love Star Frontiers. If you are a fan of Star Frontiers and you post in the comments on this video with the word subscribe, I subscribed, I moved my subscription, I already subscribed, I don't care. As long as I see the word subscribe in your post, I will put your name in the running for the drawing. And I will be compiling throughout today the list of everybody who's done the appropriate comment. And then at midnight will be the cutoff. I will bring up the random number generator uh, in Windows and uh, tell it to, if it's 23 names, pick a number between 1 and 23. And I will do a first, second, and third drawing. And then contact those people and work it out. And I will ship the product to you. So... Uh, that's how you get into the running, and that's how this works. 
So again, I want to thank you for supporting the channel. I want to thank the subscribers. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. This is Tom for Tabletop Tap Room at Star Frontiers Gamer, and I will see you in the frontier. Oh, and wait a minute. One more announcement. Uh, August 19th, coming up very quick, is Star Frontiers Day. August 19th is the 40th anniversary of Gen Con. And uh, Gen Con, 40 years ago, is when Star Frontiers was debuted. So we are declaring Star Frontier, uh, August 19th, Star Frontiers Day. Technically, I think it should be Star Frontiers Days, the 19th through the 22nd. Gives you more, gives you more time to play with it. You know, so uh, and I will be running a uh, a game. Uh, it will be live cast, so that if you want to watch, but you can't participate, or you can only just come and watch for a little bit, uh, you can sit in. Um, I've got about, I think I have five slots spoken for, uh, and I'm still waiting to hear from one of my former players from my Port Lauren Chronicles game. He hasn't gotten back to me, and pretty soon I'm just going to throw it open. Uh, for you know whoever wants to get in uh, we are running a mining ship adventure and uh, it's called rock hound and it's kind of a play test of material i've been working on for years actually now so it's a little bit of a play test and i'm uh, you know the boring parts of like three months worth of excavating ore out of a rock and refining it and putting it in the car those parts we're going to cover with five minutes worth of exposition by me. Just I'll have it. It'll all, all, all of it will be calculated and you know, just read the little statement. It won't even take a minute or two. Um, and so we can just move on to the actual adventure part of the mining ship. But it, this will be an attempt at running a commerce campaign where you have the ship. You must make money to pay the mortgage on the ship. And um, so we're going to try that out and see how that works. I've never run one. Uh, well, we'll, we're going to do that with a mining ship set in the Clarion star system. So be sure to tune in for that live stream on Star Frontiers Day, August the 19th, which is a Friday. And we are starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you're even if you're not in the game and you want to watch, you want to comment. Uh, and I think just maybe. Oh, yeah, I do have I do have some things that might be I might be running. Um, you know, Eric Tenkar showed me where that uh, that StreamYard tool is that lets you do, you know, it goes three, two, one. It collects everybody in the comments section who have commented and you can do a giveaway. And so we might have some giveaways for that just to celebrate Star Frontiers Day. So I've got some uh, uh, I, I've got some I think I got some cool Star Frontier swag um, for that and uh, gaming much more gaming related than the, you know, silly coffee cup. <clears throat> but uh that's coming up. So don't forget, tune in for that as well. And again, I'll see you in the frontier.